as things get underway. It's going to be about frontline control for TPA. Last game, they had a very hard time getting to the targets they wanted to. It's going to be hard to get through the Zyra. She's very, very hard to run. And again, Azubu Frost might have the team fight edge, and TPA just has to win laning and mid game harder. That's what they've done in the past. They've ended games very early on. And all five members of Azubu Frost getting slightly spotted out there. They're going aggressive level one. TPA trying to hold this off. They do have a defensive formation. They're actually all grouped up around here. They have a ward on their blue buff. They're worried about Azubu's level one, and they might just try to do something sneaky. So Azubu Frost stood on top of a ward at the moment, so Taipei Assassins know exactly where they are. There goes the sapling showing Taipei Assassins in the bush. If you have just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, Azubu Frost 1-0 up as the blue side against Taipei Assassins as the red side. Currently, the invade seem to have backed off. Everybody has gone back their own way. Taipei Assassins still lingering, though. We see Cloud Templar backing away. Cloud Templar teleporting off. Yeah, and that was actually because he used so much of his mana scouting with his saplings, he had to go back to base if he wanted to have mana for his jungle, especially since it looks like they're starting red buff. He'll need to have mana left for his blue. If they go for an invade, they did place that ward early, which tells me they might want to see a delayed invade possible, but it could get countered by the fact there's two wards on that blue buff. There's a lot of pings going down here, and it does seem to me that Azubu Frost has something kind of sneaky planned here. We'll see if they are able to execute it. And Toy's taking away the manager right there. Very nicely done. As a level one, getting that steal in. Took a bit of damage for his troubles. Is he going to go for a lane change, though? He is heading south. This could be a car that's down the bottom, or is he just going to go for the blue? I'm not too sure what he's going to help out. Oh, and this is actually a fast push mid strategy. We know they like taking the mid tower first early, and they're going to have Sona Caitlyn trying to 1v2 up against them, but they're counter switching, trying to get Rapid Star into a 1v2 against Toys. That's an extremely dangerous lane for both of them, and the ganks are going to be extremely impactful. But TPA, even with this matchup, should still win the mid lane. It's going to be a bit of a farm off, though, and there'll be a lot of attention paid to that bottom lane since both those guys are extremely vulnerable to ganks. Nothing coming in the jungles, but all going on in the lanes. Let's have a look, and you can see Lil Ball's picking up the blue buff. He's going to take it, and Taipei Assassin's immediately switching things up. They're going to try and come around the backside of Rapid Star. Rapid Star maybe spotting it. He's going to back straight off, puts the ward in that tri bush. And you can see Sona coming around, going to have that poke. Stanley taken down very low by Shy there. Meanwhile, down the bottom, if we can just get a glimpse of Sona, Sona taking some damage from Rapid Star. And again, the lanes trying to change their dynamic, and Carthus has gone back to the middle. They're trying to swap really quickly here, and Lil Ball is actually sitting around at the Dragon. I think he's just trying to catch Mad Life warding. He's he might got it with a cleaver. He's got a cleaver on him. He's flashed in. He gets exhausted instantly by Mad Life, but they're going to turn him down. That's going to be first blood in his BB that picks it up once again. And now Carthus is heading north. He's actually going for the race to tell a lie, but he used the teleport but to get back in towards that mid lane. And this is what TPA needed jumping out at the start of this game. Woom trying to get punished. The back and forth lane swaps. TPA was ready for him. Amazing play by Lil Balls there. He knew the patterns of supports and knew that once they swapped lanes, they had to get wards in the river. As soon as Mad Life walked for that, he was able to catch him out with the cleaver. And that was, again, a brilliant gank play by Lil Balls. He did that in the first game as well. And he might give his bottom lane the huge advantage it needs. Yeah, Woom being zoned out a little bit here by mistake. Level 2 versus BB at level 3 already. Going to try and keep him down, of course. That wave will get pushed in towards the tower, so there's only so much they can try and zone him. We do see Cloud Templar coming around just above. Is he going to be able to sneak through that tri-bush? I'm pretty sure there was a ward that went down in that bush yep. earlier on. Yes, it is. They've just passed straight by that ward, and the sapling goes down. Mistake just clearing that one out. And that will get reset the lanes. Let's take a look at this top lane. We can see Lil Ball's heading there right now. Jax versus Shen. And Shy does not have any wards here, but he's positioned fairly defensively in his lane. They might end up burning a flash here, but he senses something. Stanley gave a bit of a tail. He pushed up where he wouldn't normally, and Shy's playing very carefully here. Lil Ball's now going back down. His rate's completely getting sacrificed for Toys, and going into that mid lane, this is Toys' crazy landing skills coming into play again. 34 minions to 18 of Rapid Star. That lane swapping, he was one step ahead, and it gave him an early lead. Now he's just trying to punish Rapid Star with it. The clever player Cloud Templar there, you can see Corona sampling of the walls. He's trying to get the timers going down, trying to keep the position of Lil Balls. We know that he's at the top there, just taking the golems. He's going to come around. Shy is just going to get pushed against his tower. Instead, Lil Balls looking like he may go for the invade of his own. He heads down towards the middle. We can see Cloud Templar just stepping off at the side there, trying to go towards Toys. Toys, of course, very vulnerable as Lil Balls going for the walls, and they're both 
and counter invading each other's wolves. They're just both trying to get scouting information, and they are right on top of each other. Same level. Lil Ball's going with his Dorn Shield Mundo build once again. Very effective in the previous games. And even just Stanley's aggression in the top lane is keeping him in it. Oftentimes, Jax can be very aggressive, trades 1v2. But he sensed Lil Balls was there, and it's allowed Chen to push up the tower. Now Lil Balls trying to gank around Rapid Star. And Cloud Templar again trying to get bottom. He got spotted out by the end of that ward. Lil Balls is trying to zone Rapid Star out of mid. Yeah, he could. He steps onto a trap, actually, I think it was. Straight on Kanan's trap. Rapid Star immediately aware. So they know the jungle's positions. They're going to try and counter this one. Taipei Assassin's getting poked off and just heavily here on this bottom lane. Wound to run a lot of damage down on towards Mistake there. I'd like to gain the poke from these two. How do you rate these two lanes between them? I and mean, obviously we've seen the Ezreal Sona, so it's the power in that lane, but Caitlyn Sona versus Zyra Ezreal. And this is that support Zyra that Azubu Frost actually were the first ones to play Mad Life, a lot of experience on it. It's all about the team fighting phase, but you can actually get extremely aggressive with Zyra in the lane. Mistake wants to be high, heavy, and strong with the poke, but BB gets caught up by the root. You can see the aggression that comes down. Two plants getting spawned, and BB getting zoned out right away. Getting pushed heavily there, and Mad Life manages to put a lot of damage down. So forcing him back. Is he going to go back off? Yes, he will. He's going to have to buy. He will not be able to stick around. Of course, Sona had gone back. We are seeing the top lane trading blows as well. Jack's down to about half health there. And Toys now heading south. Aren't they going to go for invaders? Is it just going to be simply be the race, or they're well, going to try, try a four-man gank down at the bottom here? You can see that Azubu Frost had pushed up, and since BB went back to base, you thought maybe they were going to try a tower push, but they're also playing conservatively, and they had to walk back out. They decided against that one. Lowball spending a lot of time trying to counter and create things. He's falling a bit behind for himself. He's only level four at seven minutes, and giving a level or experience edge to Cloud Templar's Maokai could be dangerous. Every time Cloud Templar's had a level advantage on an enemy jungler, he's pushed it really, really hard. And if they get some kind of successful gank, it could be very dangerous for TPA. Yeah, and in the middle, we're seeing a huge CS advantage already building by Toys. Toys 63 to 42. He's got a 20 CS difference. And the top lane, Stanley versus Shy, does a 10 CS difference there. Stanley's starting to build a lead as well. So these lanes are actually going out quite well for Taipei Assassins. You can see that reflected in the gold advantage already built up. And this is what they need because Azubu Frost has went with a very strong AoE team fight, late game team, and TPA is a lot more about laning. Karthus is the kind of the other thing that will be their late game insurance if they can get there, but for the most part, this is a composition revolving around early game pressure, and that's what they're applying right now. They've got the one early kill, but mainly just out laning. One and a half thousand gold advantage is very high for this point in the game, and they are keeping the pressure down on everyone from Zoom Frost across the map. Toys picking up the blue buff for himself. Rapid start yet to go across, but Cloud Tampa will pull it. Down that bottom lane, Wing, you can see with that double Dorans against the single Dorans and Vampire Acceptor for BB. BB trying to continue that poke with Mistake's help. And they're going to get a couple of hits on the tower, the first few hits for the bottom lane. So neither, turret, neither team sorry, able to really fast push either turrets. The top lane, I think, seems to be the one where the turret may go because you can see Shy being very aggressive on it. And I really just have to hand it to Toys in the mid lane here because last game he was substantially ahead of Rapid Star with a with the opposite matchup. And now he's just 34 minions ahead, Karthus versus Anivia. He is outplaying Rapid Star for the most part in this matchup. Rapid Star trying to get in for the race, but Toys is just completely keeping them for himself. He's gonna be the fed Karthus here. And if they can turn the team fights around on Azubu Frost, like what happened to them last game, they'll be in good shape, especially with how strong they're laning. Yeah, and of course he's been stealing away Rapid Star's rates as well. So he's getting the grand share of both lanes. It is. Remember, he had the use. Did you start off down that bottom? Did you use the teleport? He has got a teleport available should it require it later in the team fights. Something that Azubu Fast do not have. Not to mention, of course, you've got Stanley's ultimate that can get himself in there. Bottom lane, there's Toys. Now he's taking away the Wolves. Is he leaving anything for Lil Balls? Lil Balls, meanwhile, in the top lane, is forcing the pressure on towards the Shy. Just keep him back there, and that's going to be a lane push from Lil Balls, which I'm not sure if Stanley's going to be quite happy with that. I think they're okay. They're trying to create a lot of pressure onto Shy, and this is Lil Balls' and TPA's overall team strategy. Because they're giving so much farm to Toys, they don't want Munda to fall behind, which means he does have to leech experience from other sources. He is about going for lanes. He's level 7, which means he isn't behind despite getting everything for Toys. It's actually much more efficient when two members get experience in lanes than just one. With that just push, he's put himself ahead of Cloud Templar, which is extremely important since we talked about it earlier. Yeah, and again, that mid lane, it's just the 
Advantage continues as the crowd still cheers those ward kills. Of course, the Oracle has now been bought, picked up by Cloud Templar. They're clearing out that mid lane. Little Bull is not quite with that Oracle yet. Got to be careful he doesn't walk straight into it. Here comes the ultimate. It's actually the Cups also. Where is it going? Is it just pressure on Mad Life? Are they just trying to force the turret here? You can see BB immediately with that wave, trying to put as much pressure down as possible. Not exactly sure where that ultimate came out, though. They're just trying to push down the turret. They're making it not appealing for Zubu Frost to stay there in fear of dying. It forced Mad Life to go back, and it forced Cloud Templar to run to the bottom lane, which essentially makes them safe from ganks. They're just trying to push down this turret as fast as possible. They want to get out of this lane and apply their pressure elsewhere. A little confusing on the use of that ult, but I'm pretty sure it was about the fast push. And yeah, Shine also taking some damage. Cloud Templar was forced to go down there, and there was half the health stripped off that turret. So, on that regard, it definitely worked out. But it's a little confusing when we're closing in on the dragon fight potentially coming in a minute or two's time. So it's 180 seconds on that cooldown. Stanley just getting stunned out with a counter strike from Shy there, and you can see already that Empowered Strike doing a bit of damage to Stanley. And you know, despite the fact they're even in the farm, a Fed Jarrett will be a very, very dangerous thing late game. And this is something Stanley does on Shen. He'll get the Cage's lucky pick as well as the Heart of Gold. He really just likes to get to the late game and make sure he's extremely powerful with all that split push. He had an early edge on Shy, but I think because he went with that double GB10 as Low Balls takes in another ward, he's getting bullied a bit by Shy, and that's why Shy's been able to sit up and camp him in that top lane. It is dangerous if Shy's able to force a team fight before Stanley gets his items. Azubu Frost would have an edge off of that. But Toys still farming, still stealing rates, 124 to 94. Both teams of Oracles now just taking down each other's wards. It is a battle for wards. Many wards died on the Saturday. And now it's been reflected in the crowd's appreciation. <laughs> it is all across the map. Which also, of course, means there's not really going to be anything coming from this because they are completely spotting each other's positions out. Of course, Requiem will be available in about 30, 40 seconds time. So let's see if Plato's houses do try and push something on this bottom turret. We are coming up to 12 and a half minutes, so they want to take this first turret down as much as they can, and of course then turn things onto the dragon. My Plato's houses definitely appear to be the team trying to push the pace on the Zebu Frost. And this is something that TPA may have taken from Team WE. You can see Low Balls is just down there trying to pressure the lane, making a Zubu Frost react to them, and that's why Cloud Templar just spent his entire game Walking around and hoping low balls ganks and tries to counter gank. Will they walk into one here? He's coming up for Rapid Start, trying to land a cleaver. Rapid Start looks like he's just going to walk away. Yeah, Toy's taking a bit of damage there, but you can see, see that he's 40 CS ahead of Rapid Star in that mid. And that is a big, big difference, considering they've effectively been 1v1 throughout it with zero help from the junglers. How is that gold laid? You can see the gold stack, and it is a small difference. Wow, it's a light 700 gold difference. That's a pretty huge difference in the grand scheme of things. And more importantly, BB is leading once again as the AD carry. And this is across the board. They are out farming. Even low balls, despite deferring so much farm to Karthus, has a minion kill edge on Cloud Templar. They need to force a team fight almost at some point because their laning phase is coming out big. Once they kill a tower, they're going to try to create action on the rest of the map. Azubu Frost is very much in stall town right now. TPA doing a fantastic job farming, especially toys. This is a huge score for 13 minutes, 156 minions. And as you said, really going to get that item advantage soon. Maybe he's going to go for Froggen's record. Let's see. In That's the World it. Finals. In the World Finals. That would be pretty ballsy play. He's got the ability to go for it. Shy being aggressive on towards Stanley again there. But Stanley will quietly back away. And we see Wung, of course, taking away those gongs in the bottom there. Rapid stuff. Trying to put a bit of pressure on towards that turret. We see in both lanes all taking a bit of a harassment here. Wall ball's coming around the back. Shy is going to get pushed, and Stanley's trying to bait it in there. How's he going to go for the taunt there? Shy is just going to be let to back away. Didn't want to go for the engagement, wasn't really sure. Spotted Rapid Star heading up the river there. Shy pulling the ward down. And we are seeing that bottom lane. They are very low. The Carthus Ultimate not coming out. The Snipe's going to come across. That's going to catch Mad Life. Here comes the Carthus Ultimate. They might get a double kill. No. A heal from the room. They saved one. But that's going to be the kill of the top lane. The bottom lane, sorry. Here we see Toys going in towards that. There's the teleport from Toys. Wall of Pain not by landing, but Rapid Star's going to get. Oh, Shen too. The rebound wave goes in. And that's going to be Shen coming across. They're going to try and get out towards Shy. Rapid Star's going to get dropped. Can they take Shy down as well? They do. And it's three kills. Meanwhile, down the bottom. There's another trick. That's an ace! It's the Sona going down, they managed to ace them 15 minutes in with nothing happening for 15 minutes. They suddenly pull off the ace all across the map. 
and they take down a turret on top of everything. So that 2,000 advantage just ballooned to 5,000. Toys was the key to all that. Karthus ultimate to start it, teleport into finish, and that is across the board, coordination by TPA, almost too hard to follow, and you can tell it caught Azubu Frost completely off guard. It caught me off guard as well, I've got to be honest, 2-0, two, two for Toys, 3-0 on for BB, 0-1-4 for Sona, and wow, the assists and gold spreading across, which suddenly gave them that huge boost in gold, you can see, it is a 4, 6,000 gold lead, obviously they've built up a big lead to start with, from picking up all the CS, they do manage to force down that bottom turret, they're gonna pick up the dragon, and it's gonna give Taipei Assassins another huge lead, can they deal with it this time though, Azuma Frost, they had this last time, and Azuma Frost had the team come to deal with it, can they push the pressure on Azuma Frost? This is a much larger lead than last game. And now that they've taken the first turret down, the seed from BB's Caitlyn, especially that he has the big lead onto Wound. Now he will outrange Ezreal, and he will be the one zoning him out in team fights. Unlike the Ezreal versus Vayne matchup in the last one, they need to be careful that Shy doesn't get too big because he has been farming quite well, and he's going to try to split push this top turret. But everyone is converging onto him, and he has no flash. They're trying to collapse on him, but he's going to be leap striking straight away from that one. Shy was not going to get caught out. Spotted them early enough. Have they realized that Mistake is in that tri-bush? Was it a ward just below? I can't quite catch it. No, it wasn't. So it's just his spider sense is ding being They're going to take down this mid turret as he would fast, though. Now, Wall of Pain is not going to be enough to force him away. They will finish it off and wound getting the damage done. And they will back away. You could see that Stanley was heading straight up north, but getting spotted by that ward. BB's got to be careful up here in the top lane. If Mad Life lands a route, they will be able to kill him. Oh, and there he went through. BB baiting it out there, doing a bit more damage, and as Taipei Assassins now turning a push of their own, they're not going to have the minions though to do the damage. While this is all happening, Stanley getting the free farm down the bottom, you can see Woong is going down there to try and deal with him, so now we have a different dynamic. We have Stanley versus Woong in the bottom, and we have Shy versus BB in the top. And the push from TPA is going to be coming out hard, but Azubu Frost has that Anivia, which is legendary for her turtle Top capabilities. Lane. And Top lane is just getting pushed down by BB. Shai actually took a hell of a lot of damage there. Took a lot of punishment from BB, and BB really is dominating that top lane. You can see that Shai's had to back away from it. BB has, has got a wave coming in. He may be able to take that turret down, you know. He's completely unattested on get that it. top lane. Meanwhile, the mid lane's also being pushed. Azubu Frost having to deal with it, and BB will take down this top turret. And he is 2,000 gold ahead of Womb on the other side, so they have a big, big advantage that they do need to press. We saw them take an early Baron in some of these earlier matches, and since it's so hard to push turrets against Anivia, they might look to force around objectives. That middle turret is being very well held by Zubu Frost. That's going to be the next thing TPA wants to group up and take. It's so difficult to push into an Anivia, but they do have now a 7.3 thousand gold advantage, and this is the moment they need to just pounce. Last time, they had that advantage growing and growing, and then they hit Ever on the map at once, getting that huge lead. Now the channel's up again, now the Rec Room's up again, they might look to do something similar again. Well, that 30% gold advantage they have over Zubu Frost definitely equates for the items you can see are nearly completing things. Infinity Edge almost already completed by BB. And he has the gold for it, it's just a matter of him going back. He's going to actually be able to complete an Infinity Edge and a Zeal once he gets back, which is crazy since Woong only has that Phage and he's still a ways away from a Trinity Force. They're now, like they did last game with the advantage, pushing in the blue buff very hard, and Rapid Star, without a blue buff, cannot turtle add infinity in the middle, so they will be able to push down that mid turret fairly shortly. Hit and run damage done by Taipei Assassin's Dead, taking away that blue buff very quickly, and now a 60 CS difference between Boris and Rapid Star, a very huge lead on Karthus. And that ultimate, like you mentioned earlier on, it is going to be doing some serious damage. A 2,000 gold lead on both carries, in fact all the carries, because you can see Stanley, even in the top lane, has a 2,000 gold advantage over Shy, which is something I don't recall ever seeing. Considering Shy has been able to get on Jax you now, his Telltale champion, who steps on a trap there, and BB immediately pounces and tries to put a chunk of damage down on towards Shy. The Taipei Assassin's being very aggressive in that top lane. They need to be careful. They're going to try and catch off. They have to use the Crescenda to get away, but a mistake may well pay the price for this one. The viral ultimate. They're going to dive in. BB needs to back away. He just needs to accept the fate here. There comes the Shy. Toys also teleported in. Taipei Assassin trying to turn this one. Can they get anything straight in there? No, you can see Azuma Frost very much backing off very, very quickly there. Really good disengage. 
That was fantastic for Azubu Frost. They actually burned the majority of TPA's engagement tools with a huge disadvantage, got away with the kill, and nobody died. So the resources that actually expended is going to be huge. That makes it very difficult for TPA to force something immediately. Even then, they didn't even get that low, so they might be able to hold the mid turn as well. That was huge for them, and Lil Ball is getting poked down pretty heavily in the mid lane. Azubu doing a really good job turtling this out last five minutes or so. Yeah, Lil Ball is ultimately forced to be used there again, so many ultimates used, only the Requiem. And the Kaden ultimate available. Kaden, of course, is going to be on a much quicker cooldown, but they do not want to burn that Requiem. I thought he might come out in that last fight, but there was nobody really low enough to go for it. And BB again finds himself a lane. And it is against Shy again, and he's just going to continue farming out. And he's getting really scary right now. Infinity Edge Zeal, compared to Wombs, only Phage and Ashin. So he can just pretty much destroy anyone he goes up to. TPA now trying to push in the mid lane. Bot lane. They're going to need to push this mid lane in before Shy. it hurts. And Shy's trying to camp. I don't think he can beat BB in a duel. Yeah, Shy's thinking about it. And BB is pretty sure there's someone there. Didn't take a peek, though. And instead, Shy has actually backed out of that fight, didn't want to get involved. But of course, he had the Toys Ultimate, so he could have had a dual combo straight away. He'd been able to get in there, do a heck of a lot of damage. So we are seeing Stanley versus Woon on that top lane. But meanwhile, in the middle, Taipei Assassin is going to try and push this one. They may have a decent wave to try and get the poke on towards the turret. It's not going to be enough because Rapid Star clears it out. That's going to be Lil Ball's force to flash Ooh. out of there. BB was coming up. They wanted to get that turret down, but they didn't quite have the damage. And Little Ball's nearly getting caught out. Dragon is up in 12 seconds, so the teams will start positioning for this. You can see Stanley's ultimate just about available. And this is the struggle for Azubu Frost. They're too weak to start team fights, so if they go in on this dragon, they're going to most likely lose the fight. They're all about turning that middle turret, and TPA taking the objectives when they're available, but really all the attention needs to be on the middle turret for them because as long as Azubu Frost holds that mid turret, the TPA won't be able to close out this game. They are extending their advantage, however, and with that, all the team fights will go in their favor. They do have to find a way to create action, though, because with the big lead, it means nothing if you can't kill towers. Can't kill towers. They do have a two to one advantage. They have a huge gold lead, 9k difference now for Type Assassins, which this early on is massive. Stanley, of course, is going to start split pushing, start farming, start causing problems for Shy in that top lane, but. Shy, they need to be very careful of him because he's just going to get that free farm going. It's going to become a beast if they land, manage to drag the game out, which is what they're trying to do. As Ubu Frost, they realize they're in that stall position. They need to do what CLG EU can do so successfully with Anivia. And Azubu Frost, you know, having beaten CLG EU twice, which I'm sure they won't like me reminding them, they have that ability. They know how to play against it. They've seen that tactic work against them, so they know how to execute it. Again, here you see Toys trying to get aggressive on towards Mad Life. Mad Life just backing away. There's a lot of damage coming across there. Didn't bother using Ace in the hole. They're going to keep putting the pressure down. They might be able to get them towards the turret here because BB is incredibly strong right now. And they're just trying to poke down as much as possible to make it so they can't turtle the turret. But Anivia's wave clear is so great that they've still got two-thirds health on that turret. They've spent the last six or so minutes paying a lot of attention to that mid turret and they haven't made progress, so they have to switch something up or consider diving or creating some big action. Those walls are dangerous for TPA. They got about another third of the turret there, so they are finally making progress. This is a very effective turtle thus far by Zubu Frost. TPA really has to create something. Well, they've just warded out almost like they're going to go for Baron here. I'm just going to put that out there. That's looking like they're trying to force a fight here. The objective control could be the things they go for. They've been able to get down dragons, and they know that they win 5v5 team fights. So if they can force a Zubu Frost into them, they'd be able to turn. And you can take turrets once you kill Rapid Star. It's just a matter of getting him in a spot. The blue buffs up again. They look to want to go for this one, but they contested so many blues. They're trying to steal this. Oh, Rapid Star just able to get it off. Yeah, he tried to get a Q in there. Wasn't able to. They're trying to pin off little balls. They do back it off. That shows their hand. And they wanted that, but it wasn't available to them. Meanwhile, BB continues the farm. He's heading down south. He's going to take down that huge wave down south, which means Azubu Frost realized they've stalled it out for another few minutes. And even with this stall, TPA is doing a very good job to make sure they're getting more gold than Azubu Frost. In their semifinal game against Moscow 5, there was a new new cog on Moscow 5, and they were very much about getting it to late game. But once it got to 40 minutes, there was a 16,000 gold advantage for TPA, which meant they could just roll through them in team fights. They're trying for the same thing here because they have a 9,000 gold lead, and it's only getting bigger as this game moves on. As long as they don't make mistakes, they should be able to take out the late team fights. 
but they still have to find that option of how they create. Because they have the gold lead, they have the team fight advantage, they just have to find the upper hand of positioning. Well, BB is going to become a beast here. He's going to go back and find some dancer almost certainly going to get completed. He's teleporting back right now. Let's see what he comes out with. No. Last Whisper. Goes for the Last Whisper instead, just has that zeal in there. So once that armor penetration in, there's another ward. It's lost the ever and never ending fight of League of Legends. The ward count, I would love to see that. You know, we saw the info stats. I'd love to see how many wards have died. There were 80 kills in that one 60 minute CLG versus WE game. And that was just on CLG side. There's been many wards killed this. I wouldn't say there's quite as many because TPA has yet to start poking around Baron. But they should look to do that soon. They have so many items coming out on BB. The item advantage is never going to be this disparaging for him. Having that Infinity Edge, Last Whisper, and Zeal compared to just a Trinity Force and Double Thorns Blade on Wound is massive. Even after that, you look at Toys. He's going for the same item build as Rapid Star, but he's completed his Rod of Ages and an Ilzy Large Rod on top of that. They look to try to finish off this mid turret, but they are actually playing very, very cautious. They can't seem to land quite the right Karthus wall. They can't get quite enough poke out. This turret has been up forever. And it's a two and a half thousand gold between the top lane as well. Stanley now got the Ionic Spark, got the Aegis of Legion, now building that Trinity Force up just against Shy's Trinity Force. However, Shy really only needs that Trinity Force if he can get by himself a little bit of time to jump in there, get that Counter Strike off, and obviously BB is going to be the target. The question is, can he get onto BB successfully? Can he get kept away from him? Of course, he's going to have a lot of tools in there. He's going to be jumping almost certainly into a crescendo. He's going to be covering off his AD carry as much as possible. That mid lane continues slowly to get chipped down. And in these kind of games, when there's low action, the action seems to explode and just all happen at once. And it also has a huge, huge impact because now that we're already 27 minutes into the game, the death timers are getting longer and longer. And if there's a team fight off the end of it, there will be more and more objectives taken. If someone wins a team fight big here, they're going to take Baron and multiple turrets. It's just a matter of TPA getting into the point where they can do that because Jai is 1v1ing Stanley up in that top lane. They can't quite get down on that. They still have to create action, and when they do get action, there's going to be a lot of it, so be ready. Zubri Frost trying a little bit of poke here. Maybe trying to force something out there. I'm not too sure whether they're in the right position. I think they're going to keep Stanley busy so they could try and get a force of a full view full. but you can see Toys down that bottom. He's pushing on towards the inner turret now. There comes the True Shot Barrage. That will clear up most of the way, and they will continue the poke, the poke battle. From an eight-kill game, to a 54 kill game last match. It's definitely a contrast. TPA, much different style coming out here, and it's about just laning. And when they clashed into all those team fights, they realized they didn't have the team fight team. This time, they also realize they don't have the team fighting team, so they're not crashing into fights as much as they were, were last match. Instead, they're just focusing on getting that gold advantage up. It's 9.6 thousand here, and when they take that tower, it's gonna hit double digits. Well, five digits if you count all of them, but Dragon up, they're going to take that, so many objectives here, and they're really just waiting until Azubu Frost comes out to fight them. They do seem content just farming. They're going to pick up the Dragon, it's going to be for free, Azubu Frost won't contest that one, and Stanley and Shy continue to farm out that top lane. And the gold advantage now, 11,000 in favor of Taipei Assassins. They are one game down, 29 minutes into this game. Solo lanes really continue to just farm. You might have to keep up. There is a huge difference in gold between the carries at the moment. 10,900 shy of 11,000 compared to just shy of 8,000 for Rapid Star. That is a huge difference. And of course, the AD carries has a 2,500 gold difference. The top lane, the Bruisers, has a 2,500 gold difference. It is pretty substantial on the right players. I want to say this, BB is remarkably scary, and he's only going to get scarier. Late game Caitlyn is very underestimated, but having 650 range makes her extremely, extremely hard to close on, and the fact that he has just been completely free farming on top of getting three kills and all those dragons, he's a couple hundred gold away from a Phantom Dancer, and that's almost a full 80 carry build in 30 minutes. That is immensely powerful for TPA, and once they get that Phantom Dancer, I wouldn't be surprised with a death cap on toys as well if they then go to fight around Baron because Azubu Frost is nowhere close to that item threshold. And that's going to be really big for TPA if they get to those items and then force Baron. All wards lose their lives. You can see right now that toys has just completely cleared out that bottom wave. And 
they seem quite content to keep farming that top lane. I can't tell whether it's Stanley quite happily just holding out the lane or whether Shy is forcing them to stay in that lane because they just want Shy to get stronger late game. And this is really just item thresholds, I think. All the big items are starting to get completed for DPA and then they'll create actions. Video fan dance for Last Whisper. Trinity Force just got completed on Stanley. There's another 80 gold. Toys is going to have his death cap the next time he goes back to base. We could see some action very shortly because they just hit a ton of premiums and they are really rich right now in comparison to Zubu Frost. So let's see if they do create some action. You can see Mad Life trying to cover off the Baron there. But it is a huge, huge advantage. Blue Balls trying to take down Rapid Star's Banshee's Veil before that fight was potentially going to happen. But we are seeing Toys heading towards the blue. He will have the cooldown. The old coverage continues to get dropped. But still yet to take down this middle turret. I mean, it's it's almost like they're keeping it up for a reason. They could easily just tank it down at any chosen moment. But they're not going for it right now. Ooh, Stanley wanted to get on towards Shy there, and Shy just leaps back into his own minions. And they will force the pressure. Little Balls is trying to sneak around the side, but again, not able to push anything on the Zubu Foss. They're stalling out quite well here. And here comes the Baron sweep. They have enough damage that they could take down Baron very fast, and it could also peel very well. The danger for them in team fights is if Rapid Star is able to isolate a member of their team with his wall. But with what they're doing right now, they're waiting for that blue buff timer to spawn. They're going to try to take that, and they're just flanking around Azubu Frost, trying to poke him down before this. And wow, just the one ultimate from Caitlyn taking Rapid Star to a third, and they're trying to initiate right off here. They've tried to dive into it. The Wall of Pain getting across. Actually, Rapid Star's getting shredded pretty low. But they're not going to go full engagement here. Cloud Temple might get dropped. They do target him, but they do not go for it. Stanley, that taunt, if that would have landed on anyone, it would have been the death of them. Time for Assassins were very much ready for that, but you saw the burst damage going on towards Toys there, he was forced to back off. They need to just force around Baron because that middle turret is not giving an inch, and they poke down Azubu Frost fairly lowly, so they're just waiting for Azubu to try to get them off Baron. They should be going for an objective here because they're so strong that if Azubu Frost comes to peel, they'll be able to get rid of them, and here, they're starting the Baron, Azubu Frost has to contest, TPA needs to peel. TPA goes across there, they might take it down before they react, yes they do, they took it incredibly quickly. Can they try to get on 20? Do they want to get on 20? That's the question. Are they happy with that? Now they can just push the towers. And they're quite happy. He's straight up fighting. He can see the little balls. He wants to catch up to it. Good stuff from Rapid Star, keeping them away. And they will start pushing it. Type A Assassins surely can push the advantage finally on this middle turret. If they have an initiate, it's going to be from Stanley with a flash taunt because that is their way of getting in. And they are so much stronger than Azubu Frost right now. Look at that poke. This turret going to fall. I don't know how long Azubu can turtle itself because they're really weak. Look at that damage! The crescendo oh. missing there from a snake there. I think the Banshee's Veil didn't even get popped there. Rapid Star managing to get away from that one. Wait, he went for it there. Maybe he's trying to catch out Wungo, I don't know. But you can see Type A Assassin's going to try and push that big advantage. That tower is getting dropped in seconds. They're going to continue pushing forward. Now he's in the hole onto Wung Wung there, managing to force him backwards. They could tank this one out. Stanley has the damage, has the tower. Defensive and of course Lil Balls, we know how long that ultimate is going to last. He has popped his ultimate, he wanted to go for it. They've died on towards Cloud Temper, there's the Carthus ultimate, is it going to be enough damage? They're going to try and push something here, but Shy is going to get involved. They do not have the damage to try and beat back. The Taipei Assassin slowly but surely beat them down. Mad Life having to use the ultimate there, they're going to take the inhibitor to it down. Stanley just missing a max range taunt on Shy there. They keep getting forced back, but they cannot force and repel Taipei Assassins. They take down the inhibitor for free. Nobody dying though, and they just back off. That was a very impressive push by TPA. They brute forced their way right through Anivia, and with those item thresholds, now they have even more armor onto Lil Balls and Stanley once they go back. Everyone with over 1500 gold only going to extend their lead. They took that from the outer turret to the inhibitor straight. The Baron buff is still over half remaining for TPA. They're going to do that to another lane, and it's on Azubu Frost to initiate because TPA has actually shown they can just brute force their way through and get things done. Azubu Frost has to stop something, otherwise they're just going to let TPA win the game. So Azubu Frost, they came back from the last match, they are still at 6-2 in kills. It has definitely been a low kill game, especially in comparison to the last one, where we saw 54 kills. But 5-1 in turrets shows that Taipei Assassins learned from their mistakes in the last match. Excuse the pun. They did manage to pick up and they drove home a huge advantage here. And just looking across the board, the item build, they have such huge, enormous benefits. The ability power across the Type A Assassins pick up the dragon, no problem at all. Their gold advantage continues. 15,000 gold now. Big difference. And now they're just going to try that same push they did mid. 
onto the bottom lane. Randwin's Omen on low balls. He can tank that turret for oh, quite a long time. And there's no one there to defend it. So the seat, if it happens, is going to happen at the inhibitor turret because this outer one is going to be gone uncontested. Shy is completely well away from this one. They're going to lose the inner turret. They might even lose the inhibitor turret before he even gets close. Shy is still in that top lane. Hasn't reacted to the Taipei Assassin's push here because he knew that Stanley was not there. He's trying to deal with it. He's got super minions coming up the middle. It's a straight four on four. This is what we talked about earlier in the game. They have that four on four fight and they can just keep driving in. Super minions in that middle. Where is Stanley heading? Stanley wants to take the inner turret. Taipei Assassin's just baiting this one out. And this is no teleport or way of actioning against Stanley's split push. Shy cannot even 1v1 him at this point. So if he wants to alt in and create a 5v4, he will be able to. They're just going to slowly make sure they get as many turrets as possible here. And they might actually go to flank around. It's so hard to push in against Anivia, but with the middle inhibitor down, if Low Balls and Stanley actually came through the mid inhibitor and flanked around the side, they could very well get this bottom turret. They're not doing that quite yet because they're trying to split push this down. But if they actually want to create, I'd expect them to do that. And they're just stalling it out. He saw Tori's just going back, picking up the Void Staff as well. So all that armor penetration, all that damage. Could just come look down in the, one oh. huge Requiem strike, and look at that. They're just keeping them here. It is just a three man poke, keeping Ra Azubi Frost completely pinned off. Stanley, meanwhile, he's gonna find actually he's on the walls. He's having a fight with Shy here. Shy's gonna have to back off in this one. I don't think he's got the damage to deal with Stanley right now, and you can see he's definitely gonna have the huge advantage. Of course, Requiem will be available to him. Meanwhile, starts to poke with Shy. He's definitely going down. Here comes the Requiem. Stanley's gonna flash. He's gonna be down. Stanley picks up the kill. And will that turn the advantage for Azumi Frost? Stanley can still all in the team. And Taipei Assassins, are they going to go for the turret here? There's the ultimate from Lil Balls. Will they go towards it? Here comes the oh, teleport comes in. Here comes the shared ultimate. They're going to dive in. They will get the inhibitor turret down. They're going to go for the first step like that. They're going to get dropped. They're diving in. Whoop's been exhausted. The damage on Whoop. Ace in the hole. Not enough damage. They're going to get the turret. He's trying to bouncing dive Stanley. Back off, man. You are not invincible. He's going to get dropped. He has finally gone down. The inhibitor ultimate. The Nibia damage coming in, but it doesn't matter. The Nexus turrets are going down. The Zubu Frost are in all manner of trouble. Ooh. BB though having to back out, taking incredibly low, and Taipei Assassins disengage. 8 3 up, but they took down the Nexus turret and another inhibitor. Another extremely impressive push by TPA. They're just showing how far ahead they are. The Zeke's Herald on mistake. The Baron regen was sustained through, through so much of that. Baron buff is now off them, but the siege is just going to continue. Here's the next thing. Toys hasn't died this game. Can he get another flawless <laughs> victory for himself? The Baron buff is what they'll be waiting for. They are so strong. They cleared it almost instantly last time. It's going to be even faster now. And with the inhibitor being down in the mid lane, it's going to be hard for Azubu Frost to push out. Actually, TPA pushed straight through that inhibitor for the Nexus turret. They didn't take out the bottom inhibitor. So the pressure to the bottom lane isn't going to be as high as they'd like when they go to poke on for the next Baron. But even with that, they've shown they can go almost wherever they want. And Azubu Frost does not have the damage to repel their tank line. Really, Stanley and Lil Balls just crush through. And no one can even get close to BB right now because of all those items. So Azubu Frost realizing there's no ward placement, trying to push out as quickly and as aggressively as possible because they know that that Baron will be spawning shortly. And Taipei Assassin setting themselves up for this one. Defending out as the still the cheers come, but those wards going down. And you can see Count Templar, if he shows himself down there, it's only just going to push through. There's the middle inhibitor respawning for Azubu Frost, but honestly, they know he's not there. They can just drive through, and there's nothing Azubu Frost can do to it because Cloud Templar has been caught out of position. He's going to drive through, and now it's going to be Taipei Assassins picking up another inhibitor. The bottom inhibitor wasn't touched. Actually, I'll tell a lie on the back. I thought it was the last match instead they just went straight for the nexus here we go 22 seconds and the baron will be available and taipei assassins immediately reacted and going towards it and this is one as long as they have a few wards on the approach which mistake can easily provide with them having two stacks they'll know exactly if they can take the baron for free or if they can peel either way they'll win the fight so this baron probably going to go down shortly as you cross looks like they want to harass they're running through wards the gpa just goes and fights them they're going to clean up but they're going to try to finish off the baron first maybe they're going to try to get the Baron, they do, they got it very quickly, the Wall of Pain landed, the Crescendo gets across, Mad Life is going to get caught down here, first to go, he's got the Oracle, he's trying to use as much as he can, Lil Ball's getting involved, Ace in the hole, we have walked off by Wu, not the ideal target, Toys is going to get ready, Toys goes down, first death of the game, that's going to be Coley, the Direct Field's going to come out, it's going to be Cloud Devil, it's a triple kill again, Drop is not getting caught down, Drop is not going to drop it a wall, just about keep him up, Taipei Assassin's going to try and get around, 
They're trying to circumvent on towards Rapid Side. He's going to get caught out by Lil Balls here. That's going to be the slow. It's going to be enough damage. No! He just manages to keep him back. And Wurms gets exhausted. That's going to be Wurms going down. Baby manages to catch on to him. Baby gets another. Rapid Side is eggs. Lil Balls is going to be careful there. Towers on him. That is going to be the Nexus. That is going to be the ace. Tied by Assassins. We'll take game two, and Azubu Frost are going to find themselves in a 1-1 position. Tied by Assassin, very, very strong draw.